Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and this is Mike. And we are here to talk about mushrooms today. Specifically, I think wine caps and wood bluets. I think so. I bought this, um, I, I bought a couple of bags from North Spore. <laughs> so it's in the box, Mike. Here we have uh, inoculated substrate for, yeah, I think those are the bluets. Those are the bluets. And they actually are blue. Okay. And then, oh. yeah, that's some healthy mycelium. <coughs> and then wine caps. Mm. So. You can see all of the respiration that's going on inside of the bag. So you can see it's uh, it's alive and healthy by the liquid that is collecting in the corners of the bags. Uh, fun fact, some people refer to this as mycelium piss, and those people are wrong. The, the mushrooms are respirating, and that is just the byproduct of their respiration. So I probably didn't kill them in the, in the basement. Nope, they're good. These guys are just dormant until we spread the... Uh, spread the substrate and let the mycelium spread out. So what are, we're gonna go out back in a minute and take a look at good places to put these mushrooms. What are we looking for? Well, ideally we're looking for a place that gets a good amount of shade, good amount of uh, water as well. Um, and it's gonna be in a place that we want to, that uh, you're gonna be able to check in on frequently because these suckers will pop up and go just as quickly. So we had talked about maybe putting them over here because um, this is one of the shadier spots beside the house, but that is not recommended. And what, what was our problem with that? Um, so mushrooms can act as bioaccumulators in nature. So you don't want to put them or harvest them from some place that might have like, say, well, in this case we have paint chips. So we don't want any of, the, uh, any of those chemicals to leach into our mushrooms. Now over here by the herb patch, we had we had mushrooms last year, so I'm feeling like this might be a good place to put them. The uh, the hose did leak last year, so that was huh. part of. No, it's a corrugated metal one. Yeah, now we Fair got enough. that fixed. So do you think? I don't know. It stays pretty shady back here about half the day. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's worth a shot. I mean, we have. Obviously you can see how wet the ground is uh, and the mulch in the bed is thick enough to uh, pretty much be resemblant of wood chips. And I think it wore pretty much the same way. That, um, that mulch is actually quote unquote brown cow mulch. And that's what spawned all those big mushrooms back in the garden. Oh. Um, do, you, do you think we're gonna have a competition problem with that? I don't think so. Um, Realistically, I, I would have to be able to identify what mushrooms those were because um, the mushrooms that we're sowing are uh, wood decayers. So that, that's what they, that's, they're going to be feeding on the wood chips that are in the mulch. Whereas there are other mushrooms that have uh, more of a uh, symbiotic relationship with the, the land and the trees, especially around them. This looks to be a, an agrocybe. Uh, which is a genus of mushrooms. Um, it, it comprises a variety of different field caps. You can tell by the descended veil and the way that the uh, stipe attaches to the gills down there, um, as well as coloration. Um, these guys generally appear in things like meadows. Um, some can be edible. A lot of the agrocybe species are toxic. Uh, so it's better to just leave them be. These these almost look at first uh, glance like honey fungus, but this is not the right time for them. Let's take a closer look. These are, a lot of these mushrooms are pretty well spent at this point. It got hot and then yeah. it poured. So even though these mushrooms are spent, uh, we can tell a couple of different things about them and I am fairly confident that they are in the same genus of the fresh mushroom that we just looked at. Mm. Um, reason being is because of, again, the indented stipe where the gills are attached to the stem. Uh -huh. uh, the cap has grown outwards as it's matured. Um, and uh, the, um, there's evidence here 
that there has been a veil that descended and has just sloughed off since. Um, they are very fragile. But now, yeah, fairly certain that these are um, also in the Agrocybe genus. And you don't think that they're going to compete with the uh, wine caps? Possibly, possibly not. Um, and now that I now that I see them, both of them are uh, wood decayers. However, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are competing with the same nutrients. Okay. Um, or necessarily with the same type of wood, because I'm sure this is a mixed mixed batch of wood chips. Yeah, it is. So, um, I I'm fairly certain that there's really not a lot of competition um, in, with mushroom species so much as there is. A symbiosis. Okay. I, by my experience, I, I've never really seen, unless it's a, a it's a fungus that parasitizes other funguses. I haven't really seen a lot of those kinds of competition. Okay. Good. Cool. <laughs> so I was thinking about maybe here for bluets, um, sweet biscuit. Sweet biscuit is resting here, um, but it it is really shady in there. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a viable spot. I'd say there's no reason that we can't pick a couple to spread them out in. Uh, and so so that way we'll be able to next year know what places have the best propagation. Okay, so should we pick a third spot too then? Sure. Okay. There's enough shade back here. All right. Over here. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is this is plenty of shade, uh, and the, I, uh, I think the wood bluets would have a, a good chance uh, grown here. We can block it out. I've got some logs left, I think, maybe. Yeah, we don't even have to make that large of an area. All right, cool. All right, so we've got three spots. Sounds good. So Bill and Mike are edging us up a spot where we can put these bluets in. So is this the same method you were using when you did the herb bed? It is. Okay. Just a little groove so it doesn't roll and pack it in. Our golf, golf ball harvest is, is ripe. Although a bit scrimped this year. Only one. I'm glad you planted top flight this year. <laughs> So we're going to be crumbling this up and putting it into the garden patch in between layers of mulch. Here we go. Okay, so should we crumble it beforehand or? Indeed. Okay. Should I get a bucket? Uh, yeah, sure. It smells pleasantly mushroomy. Mmm. Musty. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay. All right. So how do we... Just, just tear it apart it's, like it's a bear? sawdust, so it should oh. come apart pretty easily. Okay. Oh, big crumbles, little crumbles. What are we? It doesn't matter. The mycelium will re-knit itself. Okay. So you can go, I would say, chunks like this big, perfect. Okay, like that. Yeah. Okay. It feels nice to get your hands inside of, right? It does, though. So this is the first bed we're doing, and as you can see, it's it's already mulched. So we're gonna start by sprinkling the mushroom, the mycelium on it, and then we'll do a layer of mulch, and then we'll water it, and we'll do this two or three times till we run out of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, let's- The lasagna technique. The lasagna technique. Just like that. Badger, 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 uh. badger, badger, mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dated reference, Bill. I'm an it's old not that man. dated. <laughs> it's pretty dated. You're hanging with Xers. As far as the as far as the internet is hanging old. We were there at the beginning. <laughs> Do not speak, quote the dark speak to me, witch. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when it was written. I think this is good. I think we should put a layer of uh, of mulch over top now. All right, let's do that. So how thick? Um, I would say like only an inch or two. Oh, okay. Did I hear them say that these don't actually flush until autumn? 
something about it being like cold fruiting the thing is. Mm. Okay. It's a good thing that we planted them now so there's, there's time for the mycelium to set. Mm. Because the mycelium um, will generally live all year long. The fruiting bodies are just what comes out of the ground and um, releases spores, but the vast majority of what comprises the mushroom is underground. All right, so that's one batch, and we're just gonna basically do the same thing at the other two spots with a half a bag each of the bluets. Ooh, look how powdery that is. Ooh, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That just means some of it separated and came up top. What I would say is, since this is a small area, let's just scatter a little bit here, put a layer on, water it, and that'll be just kind of like our tester, and then the control will be over there, because that seems like a better space to put it. Okay, the control um, in the, the really shady place? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's get, give him some leaves. Oh, some leaf mold? Yeah. Having the two beds for the bluets is kind of an experiment of ours. They're really, really shade loving. So we're gonna try the one back by where Biscuit is to rest amongst all the pine needles and a little bit of mulch that we brought over. And over here, we're gonna be doing uh, more of a leaf mold on the bottom and then populating that and putting the mulch on top of that. And this ground is all basically just broken down leaf mulch, so. Yeah, I think it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> oh, you found a big chunk of mycelium? Oh yeah. There's a bunch of big chunks in here. I am just really looking forward to these mushrooms. Um, you know, a lot of this was just inspired by the whole garden to table thing. I would like to get as much out of my garden and into our plates as possible this year. Um, but also it just feels really enchanted and beautiful and special to see these popping up. <coughs> so we have put in our mushroom beds. Mm -hmm. We've got the wine caps and they're supposed to fruit when it gets cooler. So we've got a little bit of a weight on that. Um, and then the bluets are in the two spots, in the one in the back and then the one over by Biscuit. Um, and I had no idea when those bloom. Do you have any idea when those bloom? We'll find out when they want to, <laughs> really. <laughs> Good this time. Is, this is an experiment. For Stay tuned for more mushroomage, and when they when they do fruit, we're gonna cook, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gonna cook up a storm. I'm into it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we got our fungus on. <laughs> we will catch you up soon. Take care. Bye. We're growing a lot of golf balls. So if you have any recipes for golf balls, let us know.